All right, I hope we are recording. I am doing a few more demos of these material studies, and I just kind of wanted to walk everybody through some more process. I recorded some stuff in class the other morning, and I did not like that some of the palettes didn't show up looking back at the recording. So I'm uh, doing this one again with uh, the palettes and the full screen and everything. Uh, so, all right, let's go. I'm rolling already on this uh, Orca whale. Um, basic stuff so far. And again, I'm trying to deal with big shapes, and big, simple stuff, working my way down to little details. Um, I Yeah, that's kind of all that's happening. Uh, using a lot of selections on this little layer. And you'll see, in order to kind of, uh, I think just making it a ball seemed a little bit too simple. So I ended up adding a fin and a little, you know, mouth. Uh, and that was just a matter of, you know, uh, adding to that selection and changing some stuff. Uh, brushes so far, basically, it's just kind of the, the hard round with pressure opacity and uh, the soft round. And so there's my little fin. Uh, Again, all this stuff is not really far out, I don't think, for any of us so far. Um, this seems very similar to stuff that we've already done, just with the comic book pages. But again, we're using some of that comic book page coloring technique stuff in a different way here. But those are kind of the building blocks to work on. So um, I'm going at, you know looking at big values in there, big simple things first, <clears throat> and working that stuff in. And then once I've got the big simple shapes kind of established, I'm working, thinking about smaller, a little bit more detail-y type stuff. And the last thing, which was the most problematic piece, was that reflective part. The, the water on the side um, of the whale. And that was kind of a problem. Uh, it took a little while to do, and you will probably have the same issues with something. So here, I'm, I needed to get my reference a little closer. So I just made a layer mask on that layer with the reference. And just with the black and white on that layer mask, you can kind of remove stuff, or at least hide it temporarily. So I hit all that extra water around there just so I could kind of get up close and look at the texture that the water is making uh, and try to deal with that. So, you know, again, this is my little first pass of just, you know, doing some random stuff, drawing it in there. And I went ahead and used the filter to blur everything. Um, which I don't know if we've talked about using filters amazingly, uh, but but they are in there and they're for you. Ask me if you can't find them, but uh, they're a lot of fun and the blur ones are really, really simple to use, the Gaussian blur in particular. Um, so I kind of blurred this down and, and figured out this process of blurring it, making it a little transparent and then putting highlights over it. Uh, that kind of worked. I feel like I wish I had followed the pattern of the highlights actually on the fish a little bit better. Um, I think I have them kind of spread out randomly all over the place instead of uh, they kind of do make a definite kind of shape. So again, this is stuff, you know, in hindsight, I'm like, yeah, now I see it. Um, but at the time, I was just trying to figure stuff out. Um, again, I, I ended up wiping most of that stuff out, just got a new layer and um, darkened a lot of that and tried again because I didn't like where that first attempt was going. That's normal. I just make a new layer for it though. Um, paint over it as opposed to trying to delete everything. <clears throat> you can always just throw the old layers away. But since I'm experimenting, I'm just, you know, working over stuff. Uh, and trying a different little technique where I'm painting some stuff in and then erasing some of it back out. Um, that seemed to work a little better because it seemed like they were, you know, drops and things that where well, you could see, anyway, rivulets of water coming down the side of the thing. So I'm trying to work that out. 
and it was kind of complicated. I uh, will end up, I'm sure, doing a, a stuff with more kind of shiny, reflective, maybe wet looking surfaces just to kind of figure out how to make that work. But um, I kind of feel in a lot of ways like I got a little bit close, but it looks more like clouds than it looks like uh, water on something. Um, so again, that's kind of all we're after though. It's just we're you get to experiment to try to figure this stuff out. Um, I do zoom in and zoom out to try to, you know, solve and, and get a good look at stuff, but my hour was about up on that one, so that's where I'm leaving it. I'm okay with that. I'm going back to the reference now and using layer mask again, this time to get rid of the fish because my goal here is to work on making one of these just look like that water texture. So going at that, um, this time I didn't really use it very much, but I color picked some of the the colors just from that reference image, uh, just the dark and the light. That light blue is kind of from there and that dark green. And I ended up changing them, of course, uh, but it was kind of nice to just get that a basic range of what's the light, what's the dark, and to work from there. Uh, this one, I working on it, I remember we looked at that Ginzo Man demo and he did a lot of selections and made it look so simple. Uh, so I thought, oh, I want to try that. So, you know, here I am kind of putting a bunch of selections in. You can see my original idea was to have the surface of the water kind of on the top of that uh, ball and have it be underwater at the bottom. I kind of moved, went away from that idea and didn't end up liking it and ended up going back and redoing it again afterwards. But again, that's fine too. And the, the deal was I just got a lot more practice trying to figure out water, the surface of water. Um, so it's, it's, you know, kind of whatever you're doing by, you know, any means necessary, as long as you're actively working on rendering this stuff out <clears throat> yourself to make it work uh, you, you know it's it's hard to lose with this stuff and it's just the more you do the better um, one thing I think I meant to mention earlier but you might see when I, I'm looking for highlights putting some highlights in and I move those closer to a purple um, one of the things I looking at this now that I kind of don't like about this one is that I um, I think a lot of the colors are too solid. I think there needed to be, looking at the reference, there's a lot of little waves and little disturbances on the surface of the water. And in my painting, things are very smooth um, and a lot more solid. And I think, you know, changing some of the, the colors subtly helps a little bit. But I really just probably just needed to use a different brush um, with some kind of texture on it or mess around with the brush settings a little bit to find you know have a brush that has a little more irregular stuff in it than just these kind of smooth flat um strokes that i got just from that uh these round brushes so this you know might have been a i might have got further faster by playing around with brushes for a little while to figure out if there's any kind of brushes that will give me a lot of little spots and little variations and stuff. Um, but again, it's, you know, I'm just looking at light, the light and the dark, and then these highlights and trying to work them in there. Uh, what am I doing at this point? Ah, at this point, I realized how flat that looks compared to all the other ones where they look very much like a ball. So I thought, well, maybe I can play with that and just make like a little border around it, like a little porthole, like you're looking out a window or something. And then I thought, oh, maybe I'll color it the same watercolors in there. And uh, eventually uh, I just ended up, you know, turning that layer off <laughs> and repainting it. Um, and going back to my original idea where it it's like there's uh, the, the very bottom of that circle is underwater. So at least you kind of see it it looks a little bit more three-dimensional that way um, and you'll see that as we kind of move on but this was again some experimenting that just did not did not work
Uh, but I'm, it, it was okay. It was good to do. Um, and now I'm moving on to the last one, which is this glass thing. And you can see on the left a little bit of what ended up happening. Um, at the end of this one, I'll, I'll zoom out and go back to that water one. But um, for this one, once I got that uh, big base color in there, which is not quite right, I'll change it a little bit later, I started using the gradient tool, and instead of the paint bucket, using the radial gradient, um, for at least the bottom down there. So, sometimes that's real handy. And I'm just making selections. You know, we've done, and again, I keep thinking, this is stuff we've already done um, on other projects. So I'm just using stuff that, you know, we've kind of covered, that you already know that we've used for other things, um, and using it to kind of solve for this very different thing. So dealing with selections, um, that hue saturation, again, I kind of figured out that, no, it should be more orange instead of green, and the brighter part should be more yellow. So I got the orange in there. I'm doing a lot of messing with this shape. Again, I'm going a little faster than I ought, but messing with this stuff by uh, hand, and you'll see I'll, I'll eventually do a lot more with selections. And I think overall that kind of saves a whole bunch of time. I, I kind of had an idea that this, looking at this thing and really thinking about how to render it, um, gradients and selections and again soft edges and hard edges my my soft brush can give me these soft edges um my selections will give me these hard edges and i kind of you know looking at it i thought oh this this might not be that difficult um as far as just the rendering part and there's just curves and i start off kind of making them just drawing them with a selection tool um to get them kind of close and i think at some point I'll yeah figure out that that is I painted on the layer that had my reference on it so I have to you know get my layers in order move that thing somewhere else but now I've started just using that ellipse selection tool and modifying that and using that to make these curves and make them a lot more accurate so again that that kinda helped this one went pretty fast um, um, what else did I do? Oh, I should have talked about um, clipping masks, which is what's going on in the layers palette, um, where I am uh, making a new layer and c clipping it, connecting it to other layers. That's what I miss chatting about. Um, ask me about it. I'll show you if, next time we're kind of in class. Um, but this is about over. And again, with selections and stuff, that went really fast. Uh, I'm going back over that the water and showing you the the new layer versus the old layer. Bang! And then he was out. That's it. Keep working, y'all. All right. <laughs> Bye.